Hi, I'm Scott Hanselman. I've been doing build-to-build -build updates of Windows 10 technical preview as soon as uh, the Windows insiders get them. I record a video and I put them out there so you don't have to necessarily risk your laptop, your Surface Pro, or one of your virtual machines. Now I happen to be on a Surface Pro 3 right here. I'm using build 9926. This is technical preview 2, I think they're calling it. This came out uh, in the third week of January. And uh, so here's some of the things that we noticed right off the bat. Um, first you see Cortana here on the desktop. I can click on the Cortana and I will hear what's on your mind and we get some different things uh, that I'm interested in from my live account. Now you have to turn Cortana on if you want to talk to her though. So you click on that and then on the little hamburger there, this is called the hamburger, that's not a Microsoft thing, that's a user interface thing, these three little lines. And then you click settings. Now you have to turn Cortana on, tell her your name. You also, if you want to, can turn on let Cortana respond when you say, hey Cortana. That basically is a way of saying, listen to my microphone all the time. Now that doesn't mean that they're listening to you uh, in a creepy way. They're just listening uh, on the local machine for the words, hey Cortana, to be said. And then you can go and decide whether or not you want your history. Uh, to be used. So let's uh, let's try that. Hey Cortana? What is... That's me. Oh cool. Hello. What is 155 Fahrenheit in Celsius? 68.3333333 Celsius. That's annoying. Uh, how tall is Hugh Jackman? Six feet two inches tall. Uh, how tall is Scott Hanselman? And, of course, we don't know that because I'm not famous, and we get sent over to Bing. So uh, it's not quite there, though. I mean, it's a little bit rough. You can see it's a little slow, and when I click uh, Cortana, it kind of has a little bit of trouble. Right now, it's only working in the U.S., so if you're not seeing this, you can change your region to work in the U.S. It only works in English except for search but it's pretty clear that they are going to be improving it so it's nice to have Cortana there uh, I'm looking forward myself to being able to dictate that's going to be really really nice in future builds so I think the point is anything you can do on your phone you can do here now if I click on the start menu a couple nice animations that's a new animation there if I click here I get kind of this cool halfway Windows 7 halfway Windows 8 vibe I can pick up my tiles. I did notice that I am not able to resize this by dragging. I was previously able to. They have set it to just one size. But you can get back to kind of a start screen if you click expand start. This is a bit of a modified start screen. Here we go. Look at this. So this is a unified notification. This is some toast that just popped in telling me to get Java. So rather than a balloon, if you remember the balloon help that pops up, Balloon helps turn into notifications, and notifications then roll up into this notification center that we'll go over in a little bit. Um, so I can, uh, in the future, it looks like, rename these. You can see that this is a group with no name. I can certainly rearrange stuff and resize things if I like. Uh, I also noticed that I can make things half height, so I can move things like that, make tiny stuff. You can also scroll. So, for example, if this was down here, I can scroll vertically, which is interesting, rather than that horizontal scroll that we were used to seeing in previous versions. Um, right now, I have not been able to get all apps to work. If I click it, it kind of locks up. And, well, there, there, that worked. That gets me to this view. I think the essential point, though, is that you just type what you want. So if I want to run Word, I just type Word. And then there's Word. And you'll notice here, Modern Applications and Windows Applications side by side and it also happened to search settings of course as well now if I do type something like uh, I don't know Hanselman something that I maybe worked on for work that will go and search my media as well I can click search my stuff or search the web search my stuff gives you this new integrated dialog box where I can go and look for photos settings apps music emails that I allow it to look at and then you can click right there and say feedback so you can actually click within the search on the little chat there and say, well, I dislike that, you know, whatever reason, and it'll actually put a screenshot there along with that as well.
One other thing to point out that you can't really see by looking at this, but if you're a developer, they've actually rebuilt the start menu entirely in XAML, X-A-M-L. This is the technology that you'll use to make Windows 10 applications, and all of this has been written in XAML. Uh, two things that are uh, new here, the Xbox app and the new store beta. Let's look at the store first, because it's much nicer than the existing Windows 8 store. So you've got horizontal scrolls, you've got vertical scrolls, you've got a lot of uh, a lot more information in a smaller amount of space. There's also a little gear here and it makes me wonder how they're going to do settings in the future if they're going to be having gears here or somewhere else. Of course now with all modern applications you can resize them. So I can take the store app and it doesn't have to be full screen. And then I'll go back to start and I'll click on Xbox. I can see friends online, I can see recent progress, I can check my messages, my achievements, and then also get games from here. So you're seeing a lot more inter, uh, interaction uh, between, you know, if you have an Xbox and if you have uh, a Windows machine. Presumably I'll be able to go and buy games from here as well. So I can go to the store uh, from within the Xbox app. Now if I brought up two applications, let's do this, let's bring up two modern applications. We'll bring up Store and we'll bring up Xbox again in fact. And I'm going to just drag them and snap them. Notice when I snapped Xbox we still have that Snap Assist which is really nice. I can snap another modern application or I can snap a Windows app. So here's a Windows app and then Task Manager snapped. So that's nice. There's also a new quarter snap view. So check this out. Let's bring up Word and Excel. Actually, there's WordPad and the store all at the same time. I'm going to take Excel and shove it in the upper left corner, not to the left, but the upper left corner. Then I'll take WordPad and shove it into the bottom left corner. I get Snap Assist if I like, and then I'm going to take Task Manager, tell it upper right, notice that the store then gets the lower quadrant. Now stores can only be a certain size, so store doesn't like that, but if I brought up like another application like say Notepad, I can snap that as well. I can close Notepad, and then from Task Manager of course, just like Windows 8, if I double click when my splitter is vertical, I can do that or I can shove up against the right and snap as well. So we're really getting a proper windowing manager, which is really, really uh, nice to see. Now if I open up, let's say, File Manager, Explorer rather, and uh, we'll do Excel again. I'm going to push Alt-Tab. I can switch between them. Nice big fat Alt-Tab there. But I hit, if I hit Window-Tab, look at this. Add a desktop. This is the virtual desktop stuff that we saw before, and then things that I open over here, like for example a DOS prompt, not really DOS of course, which I could then make full screen. All right, then I could hit shift, I could hit control window left and right, and I can now switch between those. So I've got a full screen DOS prompt here on one virtual desktop, and I've got Excel and this PC over here, and if I click on my DOS prompt, I'm switched back. So we're starting to see much more polished interactions there. I like this a lot. I'm pretty excited about virtual desktops, proper built-in to Windows virtual desktops. Now if I brought up a couple of modern apps, along with a couple of Windows apps like Word. So I've got a number of applications here, Store, Money, Xbox, but also desktop applications like Sublime Text. Now I have a Surface Pro 3, which means I can remove the keyboard. It is both a laptop uh, or a desktop in this case. I'm docked. But if I remove the keyboard, it will switch into tablet mode. You can simulate switching into tablet mode, or actually switch into tablet mode forcibly, by clicking on the notification center and then clicking tablet mode. Watch what happens. Everything goes full screen. 
So the idea of windowing and moving around is then uh, no longer uh, a problem. Your application switched to more of kind of an iPad style. I can switch between my apps, but they're now full screen and I don't think about changing them. Even things like Task Manager are now full screen. Now if I plug back in my keyboard, I'll switch out of tablet mode and everything goes back the way that it was. Even desktop applications, you can go and swipe them from the top and uh, shut them down when you're in tablet mode. So it's really kind of a nice compromise when you don't have a keyboard. You certainly can be in control of that transition if you like, or it happens automatically. It's nice. They've redone the settings application. It looks like they're moving towards kind of a modern control panel. So it's a lot, a lot more familiar. But thing, you know, things aren't quite there yet. The networking section is a little bit confusing, I found. The flyout still exists in some contexts when you say show available connections, but I'm sure that they're going to work all of those things out. One other interesting thing that they did is uh, Window P, which usually brings up uh, changing your presentation, is now kind of the generic connect concept. So here you can see I'm connected to my desktop using my duplicate. I have a desktop screen here, but I could also potentially plug into another screen, a Miracast display. So if I turned on a Miracast, Miracast is a new wireless standard for displaying things. It's kind of like wireless HDMI. So here I've just turned on a uh, display, a Miracast display that I'm using on my, Fire, uh, my Amazon Fire Stick. And you'll notice it immediately shows up there as an optional place to send video to. So you can connect to wireless audio and video, Miracast, Bluetooth, whatever you like. So that's kind of nice. Another thing just to show you uh, as we wrap up here, when I click on Explorer, previous builds would take you to this place called Quick Access. Now I'm not sure what I think about all these push bins but you can certainly change these options if you don't like them by going view options and then where it says open file explorer 2 you can choose this PC versus quick access so be sure to explore all of the different things that are available to you so you know just to give you a sense of what's going on they're moving forward it's it's pretty nice it is a little slow on my machine but uh, you know it is a debug build they're certainly collecting a lots of information uh, if you've got the machine to spare, joining Windows Insider and installing uh, this stuff is, is worth your time. One suggestion I would give you, depending on how risk adverse you are, when you go to the settings application, go to update and recovery. And under advanced options, where it says choose how preview builds are installed, you can pick fast or slow. So whether uh, if you go fast, you're going to see new things sooner. You're going to get the dailies, basically. Not the dailies, but the weeklies, you know. As fast as you can get them, they will give them to you. Um, but uh, if you go slower, you're going to be uh, having to deal with setup issues a lot less, but potentially uh, will be a little bit more satisfied because big, a lot of things will be fixed all at once. I like to live on the fast side of things, so that's what I'm going to do. So this has been an overview of build 9926 Windows 10 Technical Preview 2. As always, I will keep putting these previews up as they come, and I would very much encourage you to view the rest of my channel. I've got tips on Microsoft Office and how to use Windows 8.1. There's a lot more here than just this one video. Thank you very much.